Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionitis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's review Nephrotic Syndrome. This is part of my playlist called 5-Minute Review. In this video, we will review the definition of nephrotic syndrome, minimal change disease, focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, membranous nephropathy, diabetic nephropathy, amyloid nephropathy. Now let's get started. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. Every one of these topics had its own video before. Today, we're just reviewing them very quickly. Nephrotic syndrome is when your kidney loses protein in the urine. Lots of protein, more than 3.5 grams per day. Nephrotic syndrome is a cause of hyperproteinuria and hypoproteinemia. That's why you have low oncotic pressure and you get edema. The edema of kidney disease usually has periorbital edema too, unlike the edema of CHF and cirrhosis. This loss of proteins decreases albumin, which decreases oncotic pressure. When I decrease oncotic pressure, fluid leaves the vessel and accumulates in the interstitial fluid, hashtag edema. Nephrotic syndrome has four features, high protein in my urea, low protein in my emia, edema and hyperlipidemia. Nephritic syndrome will be discussed later. And just remember, it's going to have seven features. Proteinuria is protein in the urine, but nephrotic syndrome is not just proteinuria, it is significant proteinuria, more than 3.5 grams in a 24-hour period. Which method is better at measuring proteins in the urine? Is it the urine dipstick or the 24-hour urine collection? Of course, the 24-hour urine collection. I'm collecting your urine in an entire day. It's harder, but it's way more accurate. How do I do it in a child? It's gonna be so hard. We will try the total protein to creatinine ratio instead. It should be less than 0.5 in infants, less than 0.2 in children. If it's higher than this, it means there is lots of protein, which is a bad sign. Medicosis, I did your analysis using the urine dipstick. I found protein in the urine. Then when I did it again, I found no protein. What's that? This is just transient. Many people have this. If it's just one instance, don't worry about it. But if it's persistent, now let's talk. It's worse in the evening. No proteinuria in the morning, but in the evening, it's really bad. Orthostatic proteinuria. You're probably a surgeon who stands up all day, or a police officer, or a security guard, etc. But if there is no change, we call this persistent proteinuria. Then, should we blame the glomerulus or should we blame the tubule? If you find increased urine microalbumin, that's a glomerular disease. If you find increased beta-2 microglobulin, it's a tubular disease. The beta-2 microglobulin was discussed before in a separate video. It helps you blame the glomerulus or blame the tubule. This is the nephrology lingo. Please pause and review. Your blood is made of plasma, which has plasma proteins, and red blood cells. Normally, your kidney should not lose plasma proteins or red blood cells in the urine. But when the kidney loses proteins in the urine, a lot of it, nephrotic syndrome. If your kidney loses blood, nephritic. Here's the arterial, mesangial cell. Meso means middle, angio means vessel. It's in the middle of vessels. Here's the endothelium. Here's the glomerular base membrane. Here's the epithelium or the podocyte. This slide shows what happens in membranoproliferative glomerulonephrites. But let's just review all of the nephrotic syndromes first. How about minimal change disease? Do you see any deposition here under electron microscopy? The answer is no. The immunofluorescence is negative in minimal change disease. Number two, how about focal segmental glomerulosclerosis? Also negative. Sometimes there is non-specific IgM, but who cares? Third, membranous nephropathy. And here we'll see subepithelial deposits under the podocyte, giving you the classic spikes and domes pattern. In diabetes, you'll have hyaline arteriolosclerosis. You'll have the Klein-style Wilson nodule. You have diffuse mesangial sclerosis, papillary necrosis, podocyte fusion, etc. But there is no immunofluorescence finding. How about amyloid nephropathy? Well, amyloidosis is going to destroy your arteries, it's going to destroy your glomerular tuft, it's going to destroy the mesangial interstitium, and it's going to show with Congo red stain or apple green birefringence. But there are no specific immunofluorescent antibodies. These five were the nephrotic syndrome. Now let's talk about nephrotic nephritic. 
How about diffuse proliferative? You have subendothelial deposits. How about membranoproliferative? We have type 1 versus type 2. Type 1, subendothelial, under the endothelium. Type 2 goes into the membrane, and we call it dense deposit disease. Let's do it again. Minimal change disease, nothing. Focal segmental, nothing. Membranous, subepithelial. Diabetic, no immunofluorescent deposits. Amyloid, no immune complex deposits. Diffuse proliferative, subendothelial. Membranoproliferative, now we gotta pause. Is it type 1 or type 2? It is type 1, subendothelia. Type 2 goes into the glomerular basement membrane. Just a heads up, in the future we'll talk about post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. It's a nephritic syndrome and we will see subepithelial deposits. And we will see who's gonna remember this. Here's minimal change disease. The patient is young, the disease is mild, the prognosis is excellent. You give steroids. Don't forget the association with Hodgkin's and the classic owl eye. Focal segmental, the patient is older, the disease is more severe, the prognosis is not that excellent. It has poor response to steroids. Focal and segmental sclerosis and hyalinosis, lipid-laden macrophages, non-selective proteinuria, you're losing albumin and protein, HIV, heroin, parvo B19, IgA nephropathy, sickle cell, beta thalassemia associations, 50% of patients will end up with chronic kidney disease. Here is a comparison between minimal change and focal segmental. Pause and review. Membranous, remember, what do we have? Subepithelia, immune complex deposition, thickened glomerular basement membrane, spikes and domes. You have proteinuria, don't forget the thrombosis, especially in the renal vein, because the protein has just left onto the toilet. With that protein that was lost, we lost antithrombin 3, so we'll get thrombosis in the closest vessel, which is going to be the renal vein. Associations with syphilis, hepatitis, lupus, malaria, etc. Diabetic, the patient has diabetes, could be type 1 or type 2, for a long time. Hyaline, arteriolosclerosis, Klimstein, Wilson nodule, diffuse mesangiosclerosis, papillary necrosis, podocyte fusion. Treat the diabetes, give me ACE inhibitors. ACE inhibitors work like magic in three diseases. Number one, diabetic nephropathy. Number two, scleroderma nephropathy. Number three, Hinoch Schonlein purpura with its associated IgA nephropathy. Next, amyloid. The patient has amyloidosis. Could be primary amyloidosis or secondary amyloidosis. The kidney is the most commonly involved organ in amyloidosis. You have amyloid deposits in the arteries, in the mesangium, in the capillaries. You have the positive apple green biofringence and the Congo red stain. You have to treat the underlying cause. That's it for the nephrotic syndrome. How about nephrotic nephritic syndrome? We have two diseases, diffuse proliferative and membranoproliferative. Diffuse proliferative, of course you have both, you have hematuria, proteinuria, you have subendothelial deposits, there is association with lupus, there is wire looping of the capillaries, you treat it like you treat lupus. Membranoproliferative, two types, type 1, type 2. Type 1, subendothelial deposits, association with hepatitis and cryoglobulinemia. Type 2 goes into the membrane, it's the dense deposit disease, and it's associated with C3 nephritic factor with consumption of your complement, hashtag hypocomplementemia. These are the stages of chronic kidney failure. And here's a quick review of nephrotic syndrome. If you like this video, you will adore my antibiotics course. It has 40 videos, 70 questions, 35 cases with answers, my Perfectionist Ultimate Notebook and a Mind Map. You can download it today at medicosisperfectionist.com. On my website, I also have a renal physiology course, an acid-based course, cardiac pharmacology course, and my brand new pharmacokinetics pharmacodynamics course. Use promo code PANCREAS to get a 30% discount. And thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Sanitas, where medicine makes perfect sense.